there is no good or wrong way to create a game. And I thought, why not just document what I do, how I work, and hopefully this will bring some value to you. So today I'm talking about something quite low level, which is creating a project. So when I create now a new game, I have most of the time three projects. And the first project, so when I say project is like, open your editor, new, new project, all right? So my first project, I call it the dumpster. And my second project, I will tell you in a moment. So what is a dumpster? The dumpster is just kind of a dummy project that will have, uh, that will act as a place, as a most messy place to import all the assets I ever buy or acquire online. It doesn't need to look nice and it should not look nice. So the goal of the dumpster project is that whenever you buy an asset, those assets can be pretty large. They can be really, really large. And the idea is that you just import them, not in your main project, but in a dumpster project where it doesn't matter how big that project is, you can just import it. Because most of the time you import a big asset and it's huge. It's like maybe, you know, it's probably sometimes you have things that are five gigabyte. You have things that are like three gigabyte. You have monster projects that are 15 gigabyte. So those are your big assets that you bought or whatever, and they are huge, they are really huge. And this project can be quickly adding up to, I don't know, like how many we have here, we have uh, 23. So let's say it can add to uh, double or even triple digits of uh, gigabyte. And you don't want this in your main project because most of the time, let's say you have a huge library of many thing, well, you don't need all. Sometimes you just need, uh, you just needed a tiny bit here that you need in your project and you imported all this. So you have a dumpster project just to load assets. If the asset is breaking something in the project, that doesn't matter because this project is not meant to play, it's just meant to import stuff and export them into the next project. And the next project is, and here it's like up to you, but for now I prefer to have three projects. So my second project, is now my prototype. And the prototype is where I will bring only the things maybe I need from those projects. But sometimes if something is not too big, I might just bring everything at once. So it's going to be a mix of things overall. And uh, that's my second project. And this project is basically um, there to be messy, right? So it's going to be messy. Let me put this in. In like that. This one is going to be messy, is going to be inefficient, so I don't care about performance, I care about nothing, it's just there to prototype, is going to be uh, kind of bad coding practices, so nothing is going to be like clean or anything, it's going to be uh, not optimized, and I thought about something but I forgot what it was, never mind. The goal of this project, the goal of the prototype is to just test. Prototype, as the name says, post most of the time, test and validate. And things should be messy. It doesn't matter if it is clean or not. And things they are, if they are breaking, if things are misconfigured, doesn't matter. This is why I create a second project. And then my third project will be the production. And the production will be I will say not clean, I will say cleaner, because it will still be maybe a bit messy, but it's going to be cleaner as, as much as I can. It's going to be optimized, okay? And we try to make it efficient, and it's going to overall kind of have what we need to do uh, to make the game a reality. And so most of the time, this one will be used across the life cycle of both the prototype and the production. This is kind of, let's not pollute our projects, let's just have one project where we pollute things. And depending on how big this gets, maybe you want to split it even in multiple dumpster projects. Now the prototyping, oftentimes people prototype in the same, um, in the same project as they do the real project. They just have like, oh, my project uh, is project A, 
I will have a folder prototype one, and then I will have a folder maybe prototype two, and then finally I have my folder final, and people will then say, okay, this is there. But I did this also many times, and the result is that this thing here, what you have in the prototype, starts sometimes to be really annoying and just pollutes your project. And sometimes you reuse things across one prototype to another and things end up in the final version. I usually want actually to avoid this just to force myself to respect the prototyping phase and really have a clear idea of what have I validated, what have I decided on until I move kind of officially to a production phase. So the idea is to really have this phase where you go from prototype to production and you very well test as much as you can what you are going to build. And then the production project will be, okay, I know which pipeline I want, I know what kind of settings I want, I know the assets I need, I'm not going to import big packs that I only use 10% of it, I'm going to import only what I need and not more than that. And it's going to be then a much more optimized project. I'm going to have less headaches. I'm not going to have as many conflicts of dependencies and so on as I would have here or even here, especially. So it's going to be kind of something easier to manage and things that I learn in the prototyping phase, I can apply it here. And then the production for actually if you use Unreal Engine, what I'm doing right now is that the prototype will be heavily on blueprints. So I'm going to do here just blueprints and things will be messy or they will be, it will be messy. Blueprints are overall quite messy and um, I like blueprints, but my way of working today is that the prototype will be blueprints and the production projects, the first day when I start, I directly start as a C++ project. And based on what I tested and validated, I know what should I build as C++ and I know what should I build as BP. And if things have been built here with blueprints and they are good, no problem. I just control C, control V and bring them over here the things that I need. But sometimes I will have prototyped something with blueprints and thought, well, if I need now to do the same in production, I tested it and it's going to be now a bit bigger, a bit more dependency and so on. I'm thinking, okay, I will prefer to have just C++ for this part. Um, so that's my way of working. A dumpstop project for all your assets, your prototype for testing and validation, and finally, your production project, that will be the one that you ship, okay? And if you need to test things or prototype things, you just go back and forth between the prototype and the production and you are not messing around with your uh, production thing. Another variation of this, so as a bonus, here's a variation. The variation is to make more use of version control. So you would have number two instead of, I'll call it number two A, okay? Instead of having prototype and, pro and production, you would just have, you know, kind of, I don't want to call it production, I just want to call it game. You just have your game, okay? Let me put this white up. You just have your game and what is important, it must be under version control. So you have your master branch and then you would have a prototype branch or call it dev and you would have maybe something else as a branch. You could then have branch per feature, you know, maybe at some point from the master branch, you deviate and have, let's say we call it feature, uh, whatever you want to prototype, you know, feature, uh, wall, climbing, I don't know. And when you prototype this and it works, fine, you merge it back into your master branch or maybe into a dev branch or whatever. So you can achieve a similar thing, prototype production with just one repository and create the separation through branches. However, you know, game dev plus git is quite, it's not made for. Like git is simply not made for games because there are so many binary assets Git is not well suited to manage so many binary assets. There is Git LFS, yes, but it's. Um, it, I feel it's more like a workaround than a solution. And uh, this is why many game studios actually use things like SVN or, or Perforce because they are just managing better uh, binary assets. 
So that's that. All right, that's all that I wanted to tell you today. Create at least two projects and three if you really want that extra separation. That's what I'm doing right now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe and go work on your game.